Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, February 4th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 728. And, uh, well, here we are. Another month in. That only means where is it? Oh, there it is. Time for this. Uh, the burger obsession is real. I got myself thanks to uh, gift cards from families. I got myself a brand new cast iron skillet as shown mentioned a couple of episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I got myself a big old like five pound block of 70 30 meat. Made myself some patties. Weighed them out. And I realized that uh, it really smokes up the apartment. <laughs> yes. And because of a certain lazy laziness, I broke up my George Foreman grill. And then I realized this is like 10 year old George Foreman grill. I oh, got a brand new George Foreman grill. Lovely. Which apparently is hotter because uh, it. It was it over. I overcooked one of my burgers when I first used it. But hmm. I I also did the some new... research for some burger sauce. And so now mm. now have a recipe which I modified to my own personal preferences. A half cup of mayo and quarter cup of ketchup. Uh, three, uh, three teaspoon actually one tablespoon of a mustard relish. Uh, uh, teaspoon of sugar and a couple grams of black pepper. Okay. Hmm. Close the bun. Make the burger. Put the burger sauce on 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 the bottom with some pickles. Apple cheese, burger cheese, which I partially, which I milk on the th- on the uh, burger. On the top, I've been putting some uh, Wedberger patty milk sauce. Mm. You said Wedberger, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I wanted to make sure I heard correctly because I, I thought I heard word burger, and I was like, um. I don't know that. <laughs> I thought about that for a moment and I was like, you put what? And I was like, oh, sauce, right. Something retail you can buy. And then I wrap it in aluminum foil and let rest for a little bit. Mm. I also made myself cheese sauce. Uh, I, I successfully was able to do that. The, my second batch, I don't think I cooked the roux long enough. But it still came together as a sauce. 
but uh, I, I actually try using that on a burger too. And then my shift change at the end of the month. So here we are. Huh. What cheese do you put on your burgers? Like the slice of cheese? Well, uh, I started off with, with just the regular craft singles because that's usually for the best. Mm -hmm. You know, some sort of American cheese. Uh, but, uh, Lately, I've been putting on some uh, pepper jack and, and cheddar. Mm. Doesn't melt as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Is I was wondering because um, the, the issue I tended to have when I was making burgers at home um, was melting, getting the cheese to actually melt without taking the extra step and kind of like steaming it or doing something to like keep some heat on it consistently. Um, really, all you really need to do is during like the last minute to 30 seconds before you actually take the burger off the grill or pan or whatever, put the cheese on it. Yeah. And especially with American, which melts super smoothly considering it's really just a cheese product and not actually cheese. Uh -huh. They'll melt pretty well. But usually the way I cook it, I usually just, I already have the cheese like ready to put on. I try to make sure that it's not like right out of the fridge. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Bring it, so to bring the, the temperature up a little, maybe have it in my hands a little to kind of warm it a little bit. And put it on so it melts. Nice. But it, if anything, it ends up draping. You know. But right. uh, the American cheese will like ooze out, and when I unwrap it, got the mm -hmm. cheese sauce. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the more melty of the cheeses. But yes, I've had a very boring, boring January, so. Damon? You're adjusting. I call it like that. That's what I like to think of. Um, so, Sam and I went to Vegas uh, earlier in January um, to celebrate his birthday. We had a vacation thing through um, Hilton that we went to and we're part of, and we um, made it to Vegas. Um, we didn't do as much as we normally do, but Vegas is full of everything going on and what have you. The main thing we did, we did go see um, RuPaul's Drag Race Live, um, which if you follow us over on the um, um, RDR shows that we do, um, uh, I did talk about that, I think, in pre-show. Um it was a lot of fun. It was a great time. Um, we went to some great food places. One of the big places um, that I in thoroughly enjoyed when I wasn't sure I wasn't going to was a place called Nacho Daddy, um, which is a, I think it has, it started in Vegas and it's now kind of a, becoming a bit of a chain. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of nachos, um, but it was so good and so filling surprisingly filling and um all all was a really was really really fun it was just fun now it was busy as hell but it was also i think we went on a saturday so it was a weekend in vegas um surprisingly enough while we were in vegas it was also the sin city classic which is a apparently very big um, gay sports um, event, the largest LGBTQ you know plus sports you know event in the world, or maybe at least the country. Um, so there are a lot of gays <laughs> in Vegas that weekend. Um, 
we didn't know about it until a friend of mine um, told me about it. So it made it was a, it was rather interesting. It was a rather interesting weekend. Um, I know that that event did a lot of stuff around the city. Um, we didn't really interact with it much except at the um, RuPaul's Drag Race live show. That was because um, the Flamingo was one of the host hotels, if not the host hotel for the event. So there were a lot of gays there. Um, and you could tell if you were on the apps, just saying. Um, beyond that, um, uh, I got back into the um, Vibetri Productions. I started that last year um, with a couple of games. I did their season two. I'm now under season three. I've been cast in a couple of games. Um, I'll be talking about those a little later. Um, so I'm doing some D&D um, online live streaming, um, playing some games. I'm really excited about them. And I'm looking forward to what we're doing. Now, these two DMs in particular and these two games in particular are supposed to be going for a while. This won't be just a year-long thing. These are probably going to be... Um, one has joked, um, welcome to your next, like, three years. And I was like, oh, cool. That's That's kind of... I'm kind of okay with it because that's what I want to have happen. I like a campaign. I like to start it and finish it. Um, and knowing what I know of live stream games, they do go on for, they can go on for a while. So, uh, but yeah, very much looking forward to that and having fun with it. Mm. Gary. Um, damn, that was fast. So, <laughs> Yeah, we've already finished one month of the year. 11 to go. Uh, January was a busy month. I found out just after the first week of the month, um, sort of in a really unexpected way. Uh, I didn't find out. I agreed to, made the decision. I don't know how I want to say this. Um, <laughs> I'm now the president of our local union. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, the previous president resigned without notice. Um, and by that, I mean, they did notify us. They did not give us advance notice. <laughs> it was peace out. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we had a power vacuum situation because we didn't have a vice president. Mm. So we didn't have someone like to default things to temporarily to mm -hmm. determine next steps. So um, to uh, board officers, including myself, we decided to fill those spots. And um, because the other individual is in military reserves and may get called up, mm. which is becoming more probable as the days go by, which is mm. highly problematic for the world. Um. <clears throat> It made sense that I would take the lead position because if I was to be vice president and the person gets called up, I would be president anyways. Um, so, yeah. So that happened back on the 8th. So we are now four weeks fully into this new thing. Um, yeah. So <laughs> my plate is getting ever full. And uh, this happened right after I offered to be the, like, key coordinator of our Pride Fest this year. Ah. So we had a board meeting a month ago, and I was giving the feedback because I'm an advisory board member, um, which means I'm not an officer. I don't have voting rights, but I'm still involved. And I was giving them some things to think about because the decision was being made about whether or not to move the location of our pride fest this year, which was decided upon. And I let them know, like, this is a big deal. Like to change venue locations is a big deal. And there's a lot of things to work out with that. And we're moving to a, a bigger space, like more acreage. Um, and there's a lot of things to coordinate. And this event has been successful, but has also relied on a small, like less than 10 people, mm. like kind of effort, um, 
over the years. And that's not to say that there isn't more than 10 people involved, but like there's just a very small group of people that are like there from sunup till sundown kind of kind of thing. So I was trying to like say, you know, like we need more commitment. We need to have better like perspective on all the moving pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I threw my that my hand into the ring, and then two days later, the other thing happened. So there's that. Sunbite is gonna be very busy. I think. Yeah, um, <laughs> the presidency is till the end of the term, which is only for this year because elections are this like. Uh, December. Mm. So, uh, yeah. We'll see how that, that plays out. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, it's been wild. I don't know if I talked about this already. Um, in the beginning of December, I got a new car. Yes, you did. So uh, the car is now officially titled. So like, there's this whole process in going through the company that I went through, like that it's not like a standard situation where you go to like a dealership and you just buy the vehicle. And then like, you have that title handed to you. It has to go through this, like their department and then a third party for verification. And anyway, so then the paperwork just came and they were like, it's officially titled, which means now I have to try to get it inspected. Uh, Cause I couldn't get it inspected until I officially had the title. And then there's some features that I want to activate, but I can't activate them until I have proof that I'm the current new owner because the manufacturer thinks that it's still owned by the previous owner. So I went to go fill that out on the website and then I couldn't upload documents because it says I need to upload three documents, but there's no upload mechanism. Mm. So there's like no button, no upload, no what I'm just like. And I didn't realize that I've been waiting patiently. Like I figured this out a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, like I want to get, you know, um, like remote car start is the big thing that I really would like to have active. Um, and I can't do that until I have this other feature and I can't get that feature until it's registered and, and my name, but I can't have it register my name until I prove I have the title. Yada, yada, yada. So I go through all these steps and I went to do it this weekend and then I found out I can't even do it because I can't upload the documents because your Boy. stupid website doesn't allow it. <laughs> There's that. That, that um, sucks. That sounds terrible. Uh, you, know, you know, yeah. So, and uh, my coworker retired on the fourth of January. Mm. So I am the only person running our entire program and grant. <sighs> Instead of there being two of us. So there's that. Uh, I just traveled <laughs> to the state capitol this past week for work for two days. Um, I officially became the evaluation subcommittee co-chair, which I already knew was going to happen. That was planned last year. So like last year I was kind of shadowing on that. So now I have that responsibility, which also makes me part of the steering committee, which I've already kind of been doing. Um, The protocols work group is still moving on. So I have a lot of stuff happening in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. At least you're keeping yourself busy. Uh, on a totally different note, I bought tickets. I'm going to go see Kathy Griffin on tour. Yay! Yay. So, uh, I was like, last year I saw a bunch of concerts. This year I think I might go see some comedians. Nice. That might be my theme for 2024 is to to give myself little respites and go, go see people say things that make me laugh, so... I don't know. I, it's ironic because I'm like, oh, I'd like to go do things, and I don't think I'll have any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Just so if January, talking. if the rest of the year moves as fast as January, I will not be surprised how quickly we will be in January of 2025. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way to think about it. Hmm. Yeah, oh, that's we'll it. See about that. But with that, I think it's time for this. Mary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, so we would like to thank the following people uh, over in the Facebook land. Jesse Quintana followed us. And Walker Less liked us. He really liked us. Um, 
So yeah, and then uh, I just want to give a shout out recognition to Lloyd, who's in the live chat, who said, "Have you playing on my train home?" Which I'm guessing means that they're like in the tube. I don't know. Um, strangely heartfelt episode already. I don't know about heartfelt. I think <laughs> it's morning <laughs> and we're adjusting. If we're just talking, whatever you know. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, over in the uh, Twitter slash experts, we have new followers of Ala Alamed. I think I actually pronounced that right. Uh, Peter Lai, 57392. CLN Kurtz, Colonel Kurtz. Mm. Ikea S14462. P N J H F L B O U R U O R S X L I. There's no way I'm going to try to pronounce that as a word. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, S W Teddy Bear. Thank you for following us. So I I checked those out, David. You're not going to be able to see anything on S W Teddy Bear Damn advertised. It. <laughs> I I check these out just to make sure that they're like not bots or whatever. Um, and I usually look at their follows to see who they're following. Because if it's just like random or it's like models or, you know, lots of, you know, um, a certain kind of, you know, posting or whatever. Or it's a lot of like, give me money. I'm on OnlyFans. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, like, so even the, the P A J H F L B O U O R S X L I, um, they follow a, a lot of stuff. If I recall correctly, I was just like, and there's a part of me that's like, because there's capitals in random places. I'm like, this must be something. I just don't know what it is. Like, right. If it's supposed to be pronounced a certain way or like it's an abbreviation for like a long sentence, who knows? Who knows? So what's been going on over in the Patreon? Uh, well, we have two exciting things to recognize. First, we want to wish a happy five-year anniversary to Uber level patron Lee. They joined us on January 31st of 2019, and we thank them for their ongoing support. Thank you, Lee. And then... Also, a happy two-year anniversary um, to another Uber-level patron, Tim, because they joined us on January 15th of 2022, and we thank them for their continued support. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Yay. Yay. Uh, and, of course, Big Bear Cub Hugs overall to our patrons at the Cubster level, Charles W., Daniel C., and Michael K. At the Uber level, uh, Dave T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S., Plus our buddies, Hadrian, Lloyd, G, and Michael V. Yay. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And how about the, can you review the shows that we did in January? Yeah, so uh, we had a full month. We had uh, four episodes. The What's Going On for the month of December was episode 724. 725 was Landscape of Relationships Adulting. So uh, Dr. Edward Angelini Cook joined us, and we discussed um, adulting from the perspective of, like, uh, just kind of, like, personal responsibility and, you know, as we um, try to find balance in our lives between ourselves and our relationships with other people, not just necessarily, like, our spouses or partners. And then uh, we got a twofer, and Damon wore multiple hats in episode 726 because we did a Let's Talk About Kink episode for the Cincinnati Leather Title Holders 2023, where Damon uh, was co-interviewed <laughs> while also being uh, a host of the show with Trela, and they are twinners. Of the Cincinnati leather title in, from t last year into this year. Yeah, I love Trilla. Yeah, they are they are they are awesome. Like I don't I don't um, I know we talked about it on the show a lot, but like this has been the best thing. 
like winning it on your own is nice, but like having someone win it with you and mm-hmm. do like and especially um having the energy that Trailer has has been right like the best part. And I will say this. I'm not going to spoil anything because you should go listen and or watch episode 726. Uh, there are some interesting things that get revealed in the course of that interview, um, including about what will happen in the future mm-hmm. and what should be done if there's another twinning situation. Mm-hmm. And then coming off of that, uh, we just need a little bit of a comfort kind of episode. So we did a Let's Talk About Food last week for episode 727, where we talked all about mac and cheese. Yes. I didn't realize we we were going to be doing that uh, early enough, so I didn't get my full research done. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. The cheese sauce was part of that research. That's all right. Got, I um, got I got made it. some yesterday, as a matter of fact. Oh. Because it was one of those things where I was just like, it's the weekend, and that's what I was in the mood for. So I made a chili mac, technically. Mm. It was all right, you know? It's not, it's not going to, you know, rock the world, but then again, I wasn't, you know, trying to chef it up. I was just Making putting something together that I wanted. Some stuff now, did you mm-hmm. do scratch or box? Oh, baby, box. Are you kidding? Like, <laughs> like I'm not trying to impress me. Like, <laughs> it's it's just going in my mouth and in my body. So I was like, I have, I don't have that much time or energy. It was like, nope, I will take this box I mean, that I already had in the cupboard and shush it up a little made bit. made a cheese sauce on my own? Mm-hmm. It's actually. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't doubt it. I was just being cheap. Like, I literally took a box that cost me 75 cents and I took a uh, prepared chili sauce. Like with um, technically it was not meat, it was meat alternative. Um, mm-hmm. And. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I doctored it up a little bit. I added some spices and a little bit of other stuff, but like that was that was pretty much it. Like, What's so for. That? Hmm. What style? What do you mean by what style? Like, oh, just plain Mac, like straight it was, No, uh, no elbow macaroni. It was um, Anne's, the vegetarian, like mm. style based, uh, pasta noodle or whatever. It's still wheat. It's just that the powder pack that comes with it doesn't use like milk. I think or like whey or I don't know. Anyways, so kind of like more vegan ish, yeah, in a way. Yeah. But that's the that's the most hysterical thing to me about it because I didn't care about that. It was just that it was on sale and it was cheap, discounted when I bought it. <laughs> so that's why it was in my cupboard. That's no, why that's I'm fair. like, <laughs> I was like, when you were talking about, oh, you, but you know, it's so good when you make it from scratch and expensive. The milk, the cheese, especially, like the stuff to don't get like, me you wrong. Know, I will still continue to get the thick and creamy mac and cheese from EJB. Yeah. Oh, no, trust me. Like, I was on the app yesterday because I was like, do I want to leave the house? Because I was looking because there's a there's an app that I use that um, has local stores that have discounted um, perishable goods. So it's like Mm. fruits, vegetables, mostly meat products that are going to expire or, you know, not be sellable soon. So they usually mark everything down at least 50 percent. So it's a good like it's a good thing to like kind of check out and see what there is. And there was a local store that had. um ground turkey mm. marked down which can be kind of expensive or pricey yes, in my area yeah so i was like hmm but it was like the only thing they had that i wanted i was like do i really want to leave the house just to go buy a package of like ground turkey and then i was like no and i was like oh that's right i got that stuff in the can in the cupboard so i'll just you know let's make it happen mix up some stuff and yeah that'll be back like, i was like i just don't, i don't want to i don't want to go i don't want to go out Going out means like putting on clothes or getting dressed, <laughs> putting on shoes, getting I, in the car. Too much work. I love, I love that you're like, I gotta put clothes on. Like that's not a thing. <laughs> when I when I am at home, I am I am in I am in comfy, like light clothes that I do not want to like 
I don't walk out of the house with. Oh, no, I uh, trust, trust. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was on video camera yesterday and somebody was like, ooh, that, that looks really comfortable what you're wearing. And it was like, that's why I'm wearing it because I'm in my home like, and I'm not going anywhere. Like, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, you know, you know, getting in the car, driving, which ways, you know, takes gas and then finding a place to park and then, you know, getting a car, <sighs> doing all the thing. Going, so like, it just, it's just, yeah, 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 hush. <laughs> well, and, and, and right now, because my schedule has changed, my whole routine for gr- going grocery shopping is totally screwed up because mm-hmm. normally what I would do is after work, because on my drive home, I literally drive past two grocery stores. Right. So I've got my my backpack. I've got reusable bags. So... I just turn right into the parking lot, get my groceries, drive the rest of the way home. Mm-hmm. I can't do that because when I get off work now, this is at midnight closed. central time. Yeah. They're closed. Yeah. If I were to actually go to a place which has groceries, it would probably be a Walmart. Mm. And A, I don't, I don't shop that. at Walmart ever. That part. And B, the closest Walmart is even further away from my apartment. Right. So, yeah. It's not worth my time. So now I have to adjust accordingly. Something else. Or get it delivered if you can cover that. That's the main part. But, (sighs) anyways, uh, Damon, what do you got? I actually have two since we're going, since we're moving on. Um, first one is That Felt Good. Um, and it's from Geek Feet 666. And it says, Needless to say, that one felt good. And it's a My video. Goodness. <laughs> it is a video. Um, and uh, it's the shortest video, short video. Um, but he, um, well, I mean, look what's all on his like balls and and such. Um, um, that the top ring that I'm seeing has, I see a little blue light, which means to me it's probably a um, like a vibrating one mm-hmm. of some kind. So he was definitely going. For, <laughs> He was definitely shooting for the fences, as it were. Um, yeah, and there's I a splash was, zone. Yeah. And I will say I'm glad he had on glasses because that would have definitely gotten in his eye. Yeah. Yeah. And then my other one is, um, it says it's fucking hot, hot outside, but this is from... Um, Saint of Finland, um, and I saw this uh, um, around a time when it was frigid here in Cincinnati. It was very cold temperatures, and it's just he's taken. Um, he is outside. He is naked, um, but he. I'm assuming he has taken like boiling or hot water, and then he, you know, sprays it over it himself, and it, you know, it instantly condenses into the ice and snow, which is fun. And he did a slow motion capture of it, which I thought was beautiful. I really love this. Especially when you see like the um, bits kind of falling out of it, out of the cloud. That's mine. Really? Yeah, I follow um, Satan of Finland. And uh, they're a bit of a naturist nudist. They they like mm-hmm. being naked, which I'm okay with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing this, and I was like, I, for those that haven't seen, um, I forget what the correct term is. It's not sublimation, but like the instantaneous like liquid to to gaseous vapor like chemical reaction, which is basically what he's showing. It is pretty cool especially the slow-mo that they did for the video. 
uh, but they basically take that pot of boiling water and throw it up and you're just like whoa that's neat so yeah it's it's cool it's very cool and it's got over 14,000 views so nice So fun. Gary. Um, so I have two. My first one's called How to Dress Up a Bear. <laughs> and this one is from at the with two E's. Damasan. That's D-O-M-A-S-A-N. Uh and so it's rope bondage play. Um and so there's this nice looking shaved head bushy kind of bearded bear all done up in rope Mm -hmm. with a pink jock on Uh, and he's got some interesting ink work on his shoulder and and arm and stuff but I just like seeing this stuff I think I've shared a post from this particular account Mm -hmm. before like a different photo and I have as well Um, but basically they do rope bondage with photography Mm -hmm. Um, so I just really like some of the stuff I, I will admit, like I follow it. So I see quite a bit and I'm like, mm, OK, but like every yeah. once in a while, things like this one. And I'm like, wow, that's yeah, it's interesting. I follow them as well. And they do some really fun work. I, and again, I don't I'm assuming that it's the Adamasan that is doing the actual work, um, rope work, um, which is amazing and then taking the pictures which are just it's been great watching and following them um following them um they've had a few they did a um i think they did a holiday one either last year um that i i thoroughly enjoyed but yeah yeah i mean they I, cover this... they cover quite a bit of different stuff so like they have i was just going back through the recent stuff they've got um otter asian latin Mm -hmm. and i'm using these words because that's what they're describing some of the subjects uh in the photos individuals that are caged they've got one from february 1st as a part of their abdl series Mm. um doggy there's a there's a lot of different stuff in there and it's not the same thing over and over and over again right so i think that's what i like is seeing like the aesthetic style types um oh bear treasure hole trap okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying oh hello how did i miss this one bear squat Uh-oh. training repost um <laughs> anyways no it's a uh, it's so i like the account but I, I some of their particular photos i really enjoy um how to pet a bear how intriguing the names of these are yeah. uh, teaching panda bear riding a horsey and i think what i also like is that like their body types are varied so mm-hmm. like some are big thick boys um some are not some are in between yeah um, some of it is humiliation some of it isn't yeah. um so i think that i appreciate that they're not um kind of restricting themselves in terms of what the yeah. who the subjects are and what they're doing with them because it's it's pretty varied mm-hmm. um, but the one like one of the consistencies is like pretty much it's all red bondage rope once in a while they'll use a different alternate color like there's one here called um caged red bear mm-hmm. where they used red and green um, so yeah, anyways, I just really like, uh, that one particular photo. So there's that. And then, uh, this other <laughs> thing, you might've seen this already, um, because it kind of went viral. Yeah. Um, has over a hundred thousand views. So I'm not quite sure what the story is. I think what it is, is that there was an original ad, which is on the left hand side mm-hmm. of this video. And then this person, so the person that posted this, um, it's at Philly fan. That's P H A N Mikey. 
Um, and they said, love, love, love it. And it's for B-R-L-O beer, which is mm-hmm. a non-alcoholic beer, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So it's a 44 second like advert. But what they did was they took the advertising and reconceptualized it um, as if you replace the model, the underwear model on the left, which is kind of this like surfer twinkish He's... kind of guy. He's an actor. I just can't remember where from. Oh. And yeah. so they if you replace him with a guy that's on the right who is legitimately a bear. Like some people yeah. shared other photos of him online and were like, he's one of us. Like they were all so excited <laughs> about this concept. But basically they replicate on the right side with the bear model what's happening on the left. So he's in tidy whiteies, he's on a rooftop, he's like like it's the same like kind of yeah. image spots, which I think they did a really good job of duplicating a fair amount of the like imaging within it. There is one slight change though, because at one point the twink goes and like gets on a couch with sock shoes and underwear and the bear gets on their couch with no underwear. And then the very end of it, it says, um, you know, about drinking naked, basically, um, for alcohol-free beer. And I think this is a a beer that's made in Germany. I think it's in Berlin. So I love the idea of taking uh, an ad campaign and kind of twisting it uh, and making it into something different. And how they um, did that. I feel like the company actually made both of those. Well, may, I mean, because when you literally go to Beer's website or uh, mm-hmm. Twitter account. Their pin tweet is the bear version. So I think, oh, that's what it is. So the ad on the left is a Calvin Klein ad. Yes. Oh. And the only way you, you would know that is because you have to pay attention that like the underwear is what's really being featured. But it takes you 10 seconds to get to the underwear. Yeah. But then it's quite obvious that they're like focusing on the the underwear being the big thing which is why it's kind of funny that when the bear goes and jumps on the couch he's naked because fuck the underwear no one cares about that um well, well if you go to the like you you went to the br br lo beer site um the translation it says um we heard about watching underwear commercials thirsty does encounters with our br lo linked oh yes boss <laughs> Full body, juicy, and without the headache the morning after, it's the perfect jo- choice, not just in dry January. But that's what it translates to. Interesting. So it's great that they kind of spoofed a Calvin Klein ad with a big dude who happens to be a ginger bear. Ain't no complaints about that. No. Um So yeah, I'll add this um the original thing. Uh, it's very sexy. Just think as well. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But I just thought I was like I thought somebody made the ad to make fun of the original ad. Mm-hmm. As in um, kind of parody. I mean, to be fair, they did. Right, but I thought like <laughs> I thought it was like you or me that did it, like somebody who had like skills and you know yeah. and, and a you know a MacBook or whatever, and was able to um basically replicate it. Yeah. Right, you know, replicate it just kind of as a spoof to make fun of the original ad, not that it was a legitimate product that their marketing team paid for this yeah. like 
with the intention of making fun of that, you know? Right. Like, cause this comes across as like an SNL skit. <laughs> yeah. You know true, what I mean? True. Like with, with the side by side. So yeah. So God bless the, the Germans for being like, having a little cheekiness to their advertising stuff. My God, like I'm on their Twitter page and like the whole, like, I don't know how many posts in a row or nothing, but like this stuff. Oh, wow. And then May of 23, they made something called queer beer. Huh? Featuring artwork um, by a local artist proceeds go to the queer ramen. Uh, oh, queer amnesty of Germany. Hmm. Very cool. Anyways. So there's that. Those are my picks for tweets. Fit. Fit. Moving on into our links. Or should I say uh, promotional endeavors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as I mentioned at the top of the show, um, I'm involved with two um, productions with... Um, Two shows with Vibe Tribe, Vibe, Tribe, ugh, Vibe Tribe Productions. Um, one of them is called The Golden Feathers of Tian Tang. Um, it is a um, Asian-themed um, D&D game. Um, in Asian-themed, Asian-influenced um, D&D campaign. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and uh, this is the... These two links are going to be just like the first episodes, but we, with that one in particular, I believe we're on episode three. Um, and then the other game is called um, Gaia Chronicles, um, which is based off of um, Japanese RPGs. Um, Japanese, if you've ever played for Jeff, for instance, um, Final Fantasy, um, it is very much kind of heavily themed in that direction. Um, Final Fantasy, other kind of JRPGs, um, and uh, we're playing these. Um, both, I'm pretty much playing them alternating weeks, um, and they're off. They're both very late nights for me. Um, so the um, the D and D, the Gaia Chronicles, actually records. We live stream on Monday nights at 10:30 p.m. So it's very late. Um, and then the um, Golden Feathers is on Tuesday nights, but it starts at nine nine thirty my time. Um, so, um, but they're also alternating, so it's not as terrible. So, one night a week, I have a um, very very late night, um, but I'm enjoying it, and that's kind of the main part that is making the later evenings sort of fun. Um, and um, if you want to give them a look, you can give them a look. Um, the Gaia Chronicles, we just, we did episode two. We're doing episode three tomorrow. I was thinking, yeah, we're doing episode three tomorrow. So. I have a question, David. Yes. Are these casts, these shows, are they LGBTQIA focused? Like in terms of makeup or... Is that like not? Is it just like you know, kind of RPG, you know, D and D type stuff in general? Um, they're not LGBTQIA focused. I will say that much, but um, that has been a part of the cast. The casters' casting is usually diverse in a sense. Um, in um, Gaia Chronicles, for example, I know two of the players are. Um, non-binary um uh diversity in regards to um race um in golden fetters of tian tang um we actually have i know myself i'm sure there are there's at least one other um lgbt lgb um like bisexual or um sexual person on the cast I'm pretty sure. well i'm just i'm just asking because i'm i'm looking at the the golden feathers of t and tag and i'm like oh hi who, who you dakota <laughs> <laughs> or amador 
I was like, there's, there's some bearded <laughs> well, boys on. I was like, what's, 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 what's with that? But I didn't want to make a presumption off the bat and be like, yeah. you know, well, they're all will, part of the family, say, quote unquote. I will, I will say um, Amador is um, actually engaged to a woman and is soon to be married. I do know well, that much. Them. So <laughs> I know that much. Um, <laughs> Dakota Shiro, um, I do not know. That's okay. um, but um, <laughs> it's a fun group of um, folks. Um, I'm really looking forward to them. Now, the, the big thing, like as it mentioned, we, we live stream. We're not playing at a table in front of each other, and we're all over. We're scattered all over. Like, Amador is actually in California, and I think maybe a couple of others are. I'm here in Ohio. Um, the DM for Gaia Chronicles is in Illinois, I believe. So... We're all over the place. But, you know, go watch, enjoy, um, have fun. If you like live stream D&D um, actual play, um, the Golden Feathers is more, um, currently, at least the past few episodes, has been more role play um, focused. Um, and with um, Gaia Chronicles, um, we have been role play focused right now because we have not actually, we, we get a, we did a prologue where we weren't, um, we were zero level. So we were just like regular people. And now in this next episode to starting tomorrow, we will now officially be leveled up and all that stuff. So, yeah. uh, all right. So I have to ask about the, for the other one, for the Chronicles, who's the dungeon master? Always pointing out the bears, aren't you? Um, that Baby, bear. that DM, he's hot. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> and the way the video, like, the overlay's cut, I can't see his full name. I'm thinking his name's Eric. Yes, his name is Eric. Um, yeah. And he's another, he's he's married. He may not be, he he he, he may be um, heteroflexible, but I do know he's married with children, so. Uh, that don't matter. I know, um, I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm telling you now, um, it will say it kind of, it was, it was nice to have some, um, it's, it's nice to have something cute to look at. I will, I will, I will Oh, oh. say that much. Plus. <laughs> anyways, and, anyways. And, and Eric's the sweetest and, 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 and Dragons, who's the DM for the, um, uh, um, the other game, the um, Golden Feathers game is mm-hmm. also like super nice and has been very fun to work with. So, yeah, no, yeah. they they seem like good good mixed groups. Anyways, I'm just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you <laughs> you saw the cute bears. You're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Um. I didn't think I had anything for this month, but then I remembered because I actually looked back uh, on Disney Plus. There's a limited series they called a Marvel Spotlight, and it was the show Echo. Mm. And uh, Lalaqua La- La- Cox was so amazing in this role. Mm. She is an indigenous um, individual who uh, does not have the ability to hear to my knowledge and is an amputee and is not really a known person in terms of acting. Uh And so uh, I believe she's Canadian. Uh, So, yeah. And so the concept of taking this character and modifying it and, and putting into the current Marvel, like broader universe Mm-hmm. Um, tying it into Daredevil and Kingpin, the most recent yeah. iterations. Um, but they did so much work for the indigenous culture aspect. Mm. It just really, I thought it was such a good like show. Yeah. Is it perfect? No. Like there's always going to be like things that could be done differently or better, but yeah. for a, for a limited series, it was, it was good. It was good. And I, so they, they did a, they did a dump. They dropped it all at one time. 
Mm. Um, I intentionally watched it over several nights because each episode is at least, I want to say, 47 minutes to 50 minutes. Mm. Mm. And I, I think it's like six episodes uh, or five. So I like stretched it out over the course of a week each night after I was done working to watch the next episode. Um, it's good. It's so it's it's good. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and, and and I know that like there's a lot of people apparently like they had a lot of opinions and I was like, you know what? I give the kudos to Marvel for doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and bringing a character that's not necessarily well known, that's kind of increasing the repertoire of representation on several yeah. fronts. So, um, yeah. And Echo is a character in the, the comics. Um, yes. And um, they are a you know indigenous person. They are deaf, are hard of hearing, um, and that I think made. When she, was it Hawkeye? I think when she first showed up. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I was pleased. I, I, I've liked the character. Um, I've known about her since, oh gosh, she was part of the New Avengers. This is comics. Right. Um, part of the New Avengers years ago. Um, and I've been following her ish. I, I'm not as big. A, I'm not a big Avengers uh, comics fan, um, but I've been following her, and there's been some stuff that has happened recently, in particular, that I've been. I'm very interested in. I don't know if it'll ever show up in the show um, or in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's very enjoyable. Yeah, I will say this. I think some people will have opinions because they did change her power, like story background like what her mm. abilities are because i think in the comics she's very like taskmaster like mm -hmm. mimicry yeah and she mm -hmm. doesn't really do that in this particular iteration um huh. yeah i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything yeah, for those who haven't seen the uh, series yeah, but it's it. interesting um i will say this they brought charlie cox in as daredevil so Ah, that was cool. And Vincent D'Onofrio was in it as Kingpin. Um, yeah. And it definitively uh, kind of needed to be, in my opinion, a little bit handled the way it was because Kingpin is a violent person. Mm -hmm. And so you can't not have that character involved without violence being a part of it. And I say that because I think it was over a year ago, Disney Plus added this new element that if you wanted to see, quote unquote, adult themed content, that it's not meant for kids, that you mm. had to activate this feature and then you have to put a passcode in every time you log in so that you have access to those shows that are restricted, basically, um, for older audiences. And I appreciate that because that's the big deal that came out when Echo came out. They basically said in interviews and admitted that the Netflix multi-series universe is part of the canon of Marvel. Mm. So like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, um, Iron Fist, Defenders. the Defenders. Yeah. Like all that stuff. Um, we don't talk about Iron Fist. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like those, those series are a part of this like existence which mm. is very interesting. Um, and they are working on Daredevil Born Again. Um, currently, they're back to filming it. So, yeah, uh, they apparently started filming the season. And then the word is, like, the higher-ups didn't care for the direction it was going. It was going to be more procedural drama or something. And they, like, apparently scrapped that and started over. So mm. that's very interesting to me. But, yeah, so I, I'll be very curious to see if Echo, as a character, comes into other shows and how that will work. But, right. um, yeah, no, no, it's, a. Uh, I really just love that product, that particular production, but I'm, I'm a fan of that stuff. Like I like this kind of one-off thing, um, that gives you backstory and sort of origin and like understanding of like their time and their place, as opposed to just being like, here's a random person that can do great things, you know? So, yeah. So there's that.
Neato. I'm behind on all that. Well, folks, that's the end. Oh. Twenty ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, comes out of Shoot us an email. It comes out at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 will Talk. That's 361 265 8255. Follow us on Facebook, X, YouTube. That comes out of the appropriate place of URL. You can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning on recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. And get various accoutrements, such as a made to be shirt, flexibility for accessibility, consensus my foreplay. Some of this is design all on Zazzle at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of the designs were designed by Smashy. Find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron like our patrons we talked about earlier at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Please pop over to your favorite podcasting platform and read us and review us such as Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Google Play, Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box, Poppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. Amen. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. All most beer related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is not safe for work. You can find me as Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. That is not safe for work. Or you can find me as DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter and um, TikTok. Those are safe for work. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hope you all have a good day.